us. Donald Trump cheats his workers and wants to abolish the minimum wage. Hillary Clinton believes no one should work full time and live in poverty, and that means raising the minimum wage, fair scheduling, paid family and medical leave. Hillary fights for us. You know I could do this all day. <laughs> I really could. But, but I won't. I won't. Okay. One more. One more. Donald Trump calls African Americans thugs, Muslims terrorists, Latinos rapists and criminals, and women bimbos. Hillary Clinton believes that racism, hatred, injustice, and bigotry have no place in our country. She fights for us. She fights for us, and we will fight for Hillary Clinton. She fights for us. Please join me in welcoming to the stage our next president. people outside who couldn't get in. Thank you for coming today. I am so delighted to be here with my friend and a great leader, Senator Elizabeth Warren. You just saw, you just saw why she is considered so terrific, so formidable, because she tells it like it is. I am very grateful for that introduction, but more importantly, I want to thank her for fighting every single day for families like hers families like yours, and millions of hard-working Americans who deserve to have more folks on their side. You know,
fighting for a better future. I got into this race because I wanted to even the odds for people who have the odds stacked against them. And this is not a time for half measures. To build an economy that works for everyone, not just those at the top, we've got to go big and we've got to go bold. So, we need to take we need to take that frustration, the fear, the anxiety, and yes, the anger. And after we have vented it, we need to work together to achieve the kind of changes that will give everybody in this country a better shot. So let's set five ambitious goals for our economy. Let's break through the dysfunction in Washington and make the biggest investment in new good-paying jobs since World War II. Let's do what we need to do to invest in infrastructure like President Eisenhower did with the interstate highway system. That's when Republicans used to believe in building America and putting Americans to work. That's what we're going to do again. Let's set the goal of making college debt-free for everyone, like Erica. And let's provide debt relief. Let's provide debt relief as soon as we can as soon as we start to work, Elizabeth, we'll take the day off for the inauguration and then the Senate, the Congress, the White House, we're going to get to work to give students and their families relief from this debt. Now, we've got more work to do, so let's set the goal of rewriting the rules so more companies share profits with their employees, not just their executives, instead of shipping profits and jobs overseas. We've got the greatest country and the greatest economy in the world. Let's start acting like it. And let's make it clear that the companies have to be part of that greatness. And let's set the goal of making sure that Wall Street and the wealthy pay their fair share of taxes. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. I've been proposing a number of them. Something called the Buffett Rule after Warren Buffett. No millionaire should pay a lower tax rate than somebody working for him, like his second. Secretary. The people, the people who have profited the most, even since the Great Recession, are people who now need to give back. This country has given so much to all of us, and everybody should share the burden. So I have made a pledge. I will not raise taxes on the middle class, but we are going to raise taxes on corporations and the wealthy. And don't you think it's about time that we put American families first? We're not living in the 50s or the 60s anymore, we've got to catch up to how Americans actually live and work in the 21st century. I have met so many stressed out young parents. I've met so many stressed out middle-aged and older folks, young parents, because they're trying to balance what should be the joy of their lives, like our new grandson is for us and our granddaughter. 
I remember I was talking to Elizabeth on the phone when she was visiting her family, her grandchildren, and we talked about all this important stuff and what we have to do. And then she said, well, i got to go because I have to go buy my granddaughter some sparkly shoes. <laughs> There is no greater joy but to see young parents struggling so hard and to see older people taking care of their parents. We've got work to do. We shouldn't make it so difficult to do your job at home and to do the job that puts food on the table and a roof over your head. Let me just say a word about rewriting the rules. You know, there are a lot of businesses thriving right here in Ohio who see their employees the right way. They see them as assets to invest in, not costs to cut. But unfortunately, there are too many who take the opposite view, and their behavior contributes to stagnant wages and lower economic growth. That's why, as president, I will work to reward companies that share profits with their employees on top of paying a good wage. Because if they can do it for their executives, they sure can do it for their workers. And we will encourage companies to invest in worker training and to build high-quality apprenticeship programs where you earn while you learn, and we will strengthen unions because they are the bedrock of a strong middle class in America. <laughs> unions help bring back the auto industry in Ohio, and they will help bring back America from coast to coast. So here's our message. Here's our message to every corporate boardroom. Do the right thing by your employees and your country, and we will stand by you. But cheat your employees, exploit your customers, pollute our environment, or rip off taxpayers, and we will hold you accountable. Because when companies take taxpayer dollars with one hand and give out pink slips with the other and ship hundreds of jobs overseas, we're going to make them pay back those tax benefits. And we're going to take that money and reinvest it in workers and communities. And we're going to slap an exit tax on companies that move their headquarters overseas to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. We will defend American jobs and American workers by saying no to bad trade deals like the Trans-Pacific Partnership and unfair trade practices like when China dumps cheap steel in our markets or uses weak rules of origin to... undercut our car makers. I'm going to appoint a trade prosecutor who will report to the president. So we are going to end the abuse of our market, our workers, our people. And you know what? We're going to compete and win in the global economy by not letting anybody take advantage of our workers. Not China, not Wall Street, not anyone. And we're going to defend and strengthen the tough rules to reign
for families is playing the woman card. Deal me in! In order to achieve these goals, we have to go after and end the political dysfunction that's holding our country and economy back. So let's overturn Citizens United and get unaccountable money out of politics. Let's shut off the revolving door in Washington and make sure the foxes aren't guarding the hen house. And, and let's learn how to listen to each other and work together again. I am determined to break through the gridlock, to get things done for working families. I know Democrats and Republicans can work together. I know it because I've done it. I worked with Republicans and Democrats to create the Children's Health Insurance Program, which today ensures 8 million kids. I worked with Republicans and Democrats to bring jobs back to upstate New York and to help New York City heal and rebuild after the 9-11 attacks. I proudly served as Secretary of State, and I didn't just represent Democrats. I represented all Americans because, you know what? We're all on the same team. It's time we start acting like it. There's no limit to what we can achieve if we do. Now, I confess, I confess, it's true. I can be a little wonky. <laughs> but I have this old-fashioned idea. If you're running for president, you should say what you want to do and how you will get it done. Now that you've heard some of my plans for the economy, ask yourself, what are Donald Trump's plans? Well, best I can tell, he has no credible strategy for creating jobs. And maybe we shouldn't expect better from someone whose most famous words are, you're fired. Now, he rails against other countries, doesn't he? He says he's for our workers. But Trump's own products are made in a lot of countries that aren't named America. <laughs> Trump's suits were made in Mexico. He could have had them made in Brooklyn, Ohio. Trump furniture is made in Turkey instead of Cleveland. Trump barware is made in Slovenia instead of Toledo. So how does that all fit in to his talk about America first? But that's just the start. This is a man who plays coy with white supremacists and mocks people with disabilities, who talks about banning an entire religion from entering our country, who advocates getting rid of gun-free zones in schools, letting more countries have nuclear weapons, defaulting on our national debt, turning back the clock on marriage equality, and just like Elizabeth, I could go on and on. This is someone whose reaction to the horrific mass shooting in Orlando was to publicly congratulate himself. And on Friday, when Britain voted to leave the European Union, he crowed from his golf course about how the disruption could end up creating higher profits for that golf course. Even though within 24 hours, Americans lost $100 billion from our 401ks. He tried to turn a global economic challenge into an infomercial. Imagine Donald Trump 
sitting in the Oval Office the next time America faces a crisis. Imagine him being in charge when your jobs and savings are at stake. Imagine him trying to figure out what to do in case of an emergency. So it's no wonder, is it, that risk analysts listed Donald Trump, a Donald Trump presidency, as one of the top threats facing the global economy ahead of terrorism. Well, we are not going to let Donald Trump bankrupt America the way he bankrupted his casinos. We need to write. We need to write a new chapter in the American dream, and it can't be Chapter 11. If you believe that Donald Trump's wrong for America and that our best days are ahead of us, please join us in this campaign. We are stronger together. We're stronger when we grow together, when we lift each other up, when our economy is working for everyone, not just those at the top. Let's get to work, Ohio. Let's knock on doors and register voters. Let's send Ted Strickland to the Senate with Sherrod Brown. Let's send Alicia Reese back to Columbus. Let's get more strong progressive leaders like Senator Warren in Washington and state houses. This November, let's take our country in the right direction with confidence and optimism. That's what we can do together. Thank you all, and God bless you.